Boasting, though, as they hope to keep up with the Georgia Bulldogs. Vince Dooley's troops put up 62 points just one week ago. It should be quite a battle. Our SEC Game of the Week, Georgia versus Kentucky. Turner Network Television presents Southeastern Conference Football, a TBS Sports production. against the Wildcats of Kentucky. Brought to you by Coors. When the heat's on high, nothing beats the Coors kind of cold. The clean, refreshing taste that says the best of the Rockies is yours. Coors to you. And by the STP Corporation. On the world racetrack, on the world road, depend on STP. Also brought to you by your Atlanta area Chrysler Plymouth dealers. Home of the best built, best back American cars. From the heart of America's bluegrass country, Lexington, Kentucky, Commonwealth Stadium, where today the Georgia Bulldogs and the Kentucky Wildcats will meet for the 38th time. Georgia 5 and 1 on the year, 3 and 0 in the SEC. Kentucky also 5 and 1. They are 1 and 1 in the Southeastern Conference. Hi everybody, it's Bob Neal and Tim Foley at Commonwealth Stadium. A beautiful afternoon for football. Temperature in the low 80s, in the low high 70s, low 80s. Just beautiful weather here in Lexington. Tim, as we take a look at these football teams, I get a feeling that maybe we're looking at a mirror image of two teams. There's no question about it, Bob. They've got some similarities here on defense, but when it comes to offense, you're going to see two different schemes of passing. And when we look at the Kentucky offense, you look at number nine, Bill Ransdell. The players respect him. The coaches say he has the heart of a lion. This kid is a tough competitor. He's been hampered by injuries the last couple of weeks that have affected his motion. But he's going to direct a pro-oriented passing attack. George Adams, he could rewrite a lot of Kentucky records. The big power tailback. He likes it best on the off-tackle sweep and a sprint draw. And also look to see Mark Hogan and true freshman, a speedster, Mark Higgs in it. He's going to have to run past the Georgia defensive line. Their leader up there tackled Donald Chumley. <laughs> Don Chumley has been playing as good as any lineman on the Georgia football team this year, and they're going to try to pressure Ramsville with blitzes and stunts, and they can afford to do this because they've got excellent coverage people in Harris, Sand, Chez, and Flack in the secondary. You know, normally at this point in our scene set before our games, we talk about Georgia's conservative offense the last couple of weeks, but after 62 points last week, we can't say that anymore. Well, it's been exciting for Georgia fans, but you know, the play selection is still conservative. David Dukes is the man who's the signal caller. He stepped in for the injured Todd Williams, has played well. He certainly has. They've been very impressed with the way he's produced in games. He's come up with a big play, likes to run the option. He'll throw it on the run to folks like Herman Archie. He's only 5'9", can't sit in the pocket. He'll try to get outside the pocket. And, of course, Kentucky will try to contain him. They've got Georgia. They've got some real speedsters on the outside. Watch for number 48, Cam Jacobs. He is a wreck looking for someplace to happen. <laughs> and he's a converted defensive lineman that has done an exceptional job picking up playing linebacker. And his role is becoming even more magnified with the injury of his fellow partner linebacker, Larry Smith. And Paul Calhoun could be all-conference, could be all-American. He's having a great year. Second team all-American last year. He comes up with the big plays. The important thing to this game is that Kentucky isn't as poor a football team as they were last week against LSU, and I don't think that Georgia is as strong as they appeared to be against Vandy. So Vince Dewey's got his hands full, try to get his team convinced they've got a tough Kentucky team to play. And they have to beat defense plays like that. Calhoun is the punter. He is second in the conference and has run a couple of fake punts for a lot of yardage. Speaking of the kicking game today, Kevin Butler has been the big story for the Bulldogs. He was injured during the week in a scrimmage and it was not expected to kick, but I talked to him just about 15 minutes ago. He is practicing, and Georgia does expect to use Kevin Butler for field goal situation. Rusty Gillespie will kick off. The punter for Georgia, Chip Andrews, third in the conference. Calhoun, second. Joe Worley is the Kentucky kicker. And once again, Kevin Butler will be kicking field goals today, which will be good news for Bulldog fans, not so good news for the Kentucky Wildcats, as Butler last week set the new SEC all-time scoring record with 317 points. In just a moment after these breaks, we are going to go back 
to our studios in Atlanta for our football action report with Craig Sager and Paul Honig. Unexpected shows up. Hey, what's that, a Toyota? The 1985 Toyota Corolla GTS. A Toyota, dependable. A Corolla, affordable. A different kind of Corolla. A sleeper, a car for the street, powered by a new twin cam, electronically fuel-injected. What's it got in there? 16-valve engine. What's it got in there? Known as the TC-16. Yeah, what's it got in there? Southeastern Conference leader Georgia is in Lexington, Kentucky this afternoon, and so are the Scouts in the Sugar, Fiesta, Gator, Florida Citrus, Peach, Gun, and Cherry Bowls. Last year, seven of the ten SEC teams went to bowls. What does it look like this year, Paul? I think at least seven of them will go to bowls again this year. There's, seven, there's 17 major bowls, I guess we could say, and uh, I'd love for at least seven to, to get invitations when the year's over. Let's look at the standings right now going into today. Well, let's look at Georgia right on top, undefeated, followed by Auburn, LSU. Florida still undefeated, and Kentucky 1-1 one one going against LSU today, followed by Vanderbilt, Tennessee, Mississippi, Mississippi State, and, of course, there's the surprise. Alabama brings up the, uh, the rear with an 0-3 mark. Now, the only way Florida can go to a bowl game this year is if the school appeals its NCAA probation handed down this past Tuesday. Of the 107 violations specified in an earlier letter, the NCAA has formally charged Florida with 59. Among them, ticket scalping, payments to players, and spying on opponents' practices. As a result, Florida has been placed on three years probation, with a final year possibly reduced if the Gators show good behavior. What it means is no bowl appearances for the next three seasons, and after this year, no TV appearances, the major source of revenue through 1987. The Gators are also denied 20 scholarships, 10 each during the next two recruiting seasons. The University of Florida has already fired coach Charlie Pell, and the team is 4-0 under interim coach Galen Hall. Hall is disappointed over the NCAA sanctions, but not surprised. We've been waiting for it for a month or so now. Uh, we knew something was coming sometime. Uh, they, We've met, we've talked about it, they've accepted it. We weren't really surprised, you know, because we've been cushioned to believe that it was going to take place sooner or later. And, uh, basically just you know took it in stride and um, we're just gonna go on from here because we've had our you know we've had adversity in the past and uh, we've dealt with it by winning uh, five games in a row and and uh, it really hasn't you know affected our play Florida is idle this week school president Marshall Kreiser says a decision on whether to appeal the NCAA sanctions will be made following next Saturday's game against Auburn and Craig after tying Florida in the season opener LSU has won five in a row Today, they take home bewildered Notre Dame, and Coach Jerry Faust has lost three in a row, and he takes a look at the Titans. Well, Wickersham, the quarterback, is excellent. Their, their two uh, wideouts may be the two best in the country. Martin and, uh, I think, uh, F uh, I can't remember his name, uh, the other wideout, uh, uh, Fontenet. They're really, really outstanding receivers. I go by numbers, not names. <laughs> and uh, Dalton Hiller, their, their tailback's excellent. I think for Jerry's sake, he better learn the names of some of those LSU players. He may want to know them after the ball game. I can tell you one thing, it's fun to know, Jerry. <laughs> well, Auburn has won uh, five in a row, despite the defense giving up 34 points last week. And the week before, they gave up 41 points. So they've lost four out of five. Old Miss and Vandy will both try to get back on the right foot. Keep an eye on the punters. Listen to this. Last week, Ricky Anderson of Vandy kicked one 82 yards. Bill Smith of Old Miss booted one 92 yards, setting an SEC record. Tennessee came from behind last week to defeat Alabama. The key for Georgia Tech, of course, is to stop Johnny Jones, who is fourth in the nation in rushing. Alabama, like Florida, is idle this week. And, of course, coming up next, Georgia at Kentucky. What do you expect here? 
Well, Kentucky, of course, was undefeated until last week when they really got uh, got killed by tennis. I mean, LSU. But they gave up the football nine turnovers. That was unbelievable. You can't wait Georgia, to do that. Georgia is a good football team. They should win. And Kevin Butler will be out that game coming up next. Let's go now back to Bob and Tim in Lexington. They're expecting 58,000 people here at Commonwealth Stadium. This game originally scheduled to be played at night has been moved to noon for our telecast. The temperature expected to be in the high 70s. It's about 70 degrees right now. Georgia leads this overall series 28-7 to 2. Two schools have been annual opponents since back in 1956. Georgia last year scored 37 second half points and erased a 14 to 10 deficit at intermission to win handily 47-21. Georgia coming off a big 62-35 win over Vanderbilt in Athens last week. Undefeated in the Southeastern Conference, Vince Dooley with his 166th career win last week became the winningest coach in Georgia history eclipsing the old record held by Bobby Dodd, formerly the head coach at Georgia Tech. And the Kentucky Wildcats, a revitalized football program. They are 1-1 one one in the SEC. This game is critical not only as a Southeastern Conference game for Kentucky, but also as a program establisher. We'll be back with the coin toss and the kickoff in a moment. This is Turner Network Television. Do you have anything in aviation? The Army's most technical training. Are there any openings in communication? Is also the Army's most popular training. I'd really like computers. So it pays to have a reservation. Electronics. If you qualify, you can get a guaranteed reservation for the training you want up to 12 months in advance, even if you're still in high school. We'll see you after graduation. This is great. Thank you. Congratulations. We're at the beginning of a new age in communication, and it's hard for you to know how to bring your business into the future. But right now, Southern Bell can provide you with a customized communications package that can change as you change. An electronic digital network that can put all the resources of Southern Bell at your fingertips. It requires no equipment except the phone in your desk. Southern Bell, already in touch with the future. Down to the 50-yard line here at Commonwealth Stadium in Lexington, Kentucky, you see the captains and today's referee, Mac Gentry, for the coin toss. Okay, gentlemen, let me introduce the other officials to you. Mr. Patrick, Mr. Williford, Mr. Throwback, Mr. Granning, and Mr. Lambert. Okay, gentlemen, Georgia is a visiting team. Who's going to call a toss from over here? You will? All right, while it's in the air, make your call. He calls head as a tail. It's a tail, so you have one to toss. You can either receive, defend, or defer your choice to the second half. We'll take the second half option. Take the second half option, all right? It's now your choice, first half. They want to receive. Which goal do you want to defend? We'll defend the goal right now. All right, turn and face that goal. All right. Kentucky wins and defers their choice to the second half. Well, there you have it. The Georgia Bulldogs will receive. And we'll go on offense to begin this game. You saw number five, Kevin Butler, the story of being injured all week. One of the nation's all-time great college kickers and now the new SEC scoring leader of all time. And we talked to Jerry Claiborne, the head coach about Kentucky, as you see those blue, big blue rags out there. Football spirit's really been revitalized in Kentucky. We asked him about the difference in going from 0 and 10 back in 82 to 5 and 1 in 84. Well, I think, uh, number one, is, is our, our players... Uh, have kind of gotten a different attitude. We, 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 we need a big win, Bob. We need a win over a team such as uh, LSU or Georgia. I think once we get a win over a really a top flight football team, then they'll know that feeling and know that you can do it. Right now, we've, we've beaten some good teams, but not a great team. So it's a very big game, and you can be sure that's what the man in the blue hat and the white shirt is telling his Kentucky football special team, the kickoff team, right now. As Georgia will receive the ball, take this football here in Lexington, Kentucky. Vince Dooley, 
Very glad to see that his kicker, Kevin Butler, will be able to play today. No other real serious injuries for the Georgia football team. We will talk a little bit later about one player who is missing, and that is linebacker Bill Mitchell. As a matter of fact, we could mention that right now, Tim, while we see those teams go out. Bill Mitchell, the linebacker who's been playing so well, has been suspended for this game, and Boswell will start in his stick. Just a, a disciplinary measure taken, a little extra activity on Saturday night that uh, Coach Dooley found out about, and I'm sure that uh, Billy is home right now, and, uh, probably learning an important lesson in life. But, uh, Vince Dooley doesn't make any difference if you're a starter for him or a third teamer. If he's got his rules set up, and if you don't abide by him, you have to pay the penalty. And Claiborne's that same type of person. And that's one reason both of these coaches are so successful. There's the freshman kicker, Joe Worley, about to kick off for Kentucky. He's the only Kentucky kicker to ever receive a scholarship. They like this young man, just a freshman. Deep backs are 37 Blaylock and four Freddie Lane, who takes it at the five. Lane to the 23-yard line, and that's where the Bulldogs will set up their offensive football team. For Georgia, let's look at the offensive set today. Quarterback David Dukes, the freshman from Athens, Andre Smith, and Tony Mangrum starting at tailback. He had an excellent game against Vanderbilt last week. Archie, Hockaday, and Scott Williams, who also played well at tight end. For the offense, notice that former left guard Stevens is at center, and center Anderson is at left guard. That's because Peter Anderson has a sore thumb and has difficulty in snapping the ball. He could be switching back to center as this game wears on. From the 23-yard line, Georgia hands the ball to fullback David McCluskey, a surprise starter in place of Andre Smith. Andre Smith is playing with a sore calf and Achilles and may see limited action today for the Bulldogs. Smith, by the way, is the leading rusher. Here's the Kentucky defensive line. Look for number 54, Jerry Reese. He's a freshman and playing well. And number two, defensive end Brian Williams. And that uh, linebacking secondary core, Jacobs and Calhoun, the leader. It is second down and four for Georgia. Penalty marker, Mangrum, close to the first down. Flag in the Georgia backfield. Frank Hare with the tackle. Procedure call against the University of Georgia. Last year, Kentucky lost several fine linebackers, and that's one of the reasons they had to convert Cam Jacobs to linebacker from defensive line. They also converted uh, Larry Smith, who was an excellent fullback for Kentucky as a freshman. And, and he was injured. Now they've gone with Jeff Back Kramer. Back motion. Offense. Jeff Kramer, who is uh, a freshman, a true freshman, and he got his first action last week against LSU. This week, Georgia, nothing like breaking in slowly. How about Second down eight for the Bulldogs, following the procedure penalty, backfield in motion. And off to Mangrum. Not much running room, out to the 28-yard line. Frank Hare with his second tackle of the afternoon. And when you have second and long, the difference between second and three and four, or second and eight, is a great deal of difference for that defensive team. And now Georgia in a third down and about five conversion situation from their own 28-yard line. A slight breeze will be going from right to left here today. Temperatures in the high 70s. A beautiful, partly cloudy, mostly sunny afternoon in the heart of America's bluegrass country, Lexington, Kentucky. There's a young freshman who's played so well for Georgia, David Duke, will throw on third and five. It's incomplete, intended for Scott Williams. The Wildcats, aided by the Georgia penalty hold, and Georgia will pump the ball away. In will come the SEC's number three punter, Chip Andrews, averaging nearly 45 yards a punt. Dukes has played almost unrealistically well in his first two appearances. Uh, first time came in for an injured Todd Williams last week in his first start, produced several big plays. Georgia coaches are hoping he can maintain that pace. Here's Chip Andrews did a great job punting against Vanderbilt. Helped turn that game around with some field position in the second quarter last week. Good pressure. Gets off that good hang time punt. 83 is Eric Pitts at his 19. Struggles for about two yards, three yards after the catch, after the 22 or 23, and David McCluskey has the tackle. McCluskey is not only the backup fullback for Georgia, but the leading tackler on special teams. And let's look at the University of Kentucky offense. Ransville, they say he has the heart of a lion. Plays hurt, is a real leader. Derry and Adams in the backfield. We'll see some other very fine tailbacks in place of Adams sometime. Shirtliff and Prince, the strong side of the offensive line. Shirtliff, a good pass blocker. Prince loves to pull. Kentucky with a multiple offense, mostly out of the eye. It's the tailback, George Adams. To the 42-yard line. 
Tony Flack with the tackle. A gain of 20 yards for George Adams. This is where George Adams likes to take it. He's not an outside running back. He'll, this is a sprint draw, or not a sprint draw, just a regular standard draw. He'll pick his way up the middle and then get to the sideline when he can. He's not got super speed, but he's got enough to run away from people. He's a powerful running back. Now we have Mark Logan, 25 and 33, George Adams in the Kentucky backfield on the first down from the 32 Ramsey. Throws to the left side. This is Mark Logan. He gets a block or two to midfield and inside Georgia territory. Gain of eight, Riddle and Boswell combining on the stop for the Bulldogs. Psychology is such an important part of this football game. All week long, Georgia has been looking at a film of Kentucky against LSU. And Kentucky will tell you that they played one of their worst game in the last two years against, against the LSU football team. On the other hand, Georgia is bathing in a 62 to 35 victory over Vandy. They better be ready to play on defense. It'll be a long afternoon. It will be second down and two, closer to one actually for Kentucky, just a short distance to go for the first down. They can't get it, however. The tackle is made of Mark Logan. Over there, right at the 50-yard line, Carlisle Hewitt, the defensive end for Georgia. You saw that Georgia defensive lineup. It is Hewitt, Sims, Richardson, Chumley, and Ruff on the defensive line, and Boswell and Culpepper at the linebackers. And the secondary stays the same. Harrison Flack in the corners, Sanchez and Little to safety. Little actually called the rover, of course. And Steve Boswell will have some pressure on him today. Number 44 having to play in place of the suspended Bill Mitchell. Now Derry and Adams in the Kentucky backfield on a third down one. Derry 44 is the blocking fullback. Vancouver throw on the third down. Going to keep it and loses about five or six. Calvin Ruff, number 86, coming up. The sophomore from Eatonton, Georgia. Unusual call, Tim. They never really got a back in the flat. Usually on this pattern, you'd like to get a back out in the flat. Adams didn't get out there. Sanchez had the tight end covered. Flack did an excellent job on the wide receiver. Ransdell had no place to go. In comes Paul Calhoun to punt number 26. He is third ranked in the nation, second in the SEC, averaging 47 yards a punt. Remember, this man is an excellent athlete, and in the middle of the field, he will sometimes run if he doesn't get a good bit of pressure. He got it that time. He gets away a beautiful kick. Jimmy Harrell at the nine-yard line for Georgia. Harrell back out to the 14. The Bulldogs start inside their 20-yard line. Tackle made by number 80, Mark Wheeler, for the Kentucky Wildcats. We have 10.43 to go. Quarter number one, scoreless game. From Lexington, Kentucky, this is Turner Network Television. Chrysler creates a more powerful laser because the competition is always on our tail and we intend to keep you there. We boost the turbo power. Zero to 50 Laser XE is faster than Toyota Supra. Front wheel drive laser beats Camaro Z28 in the slalom. And Laser XE has advanced electronics, smart cross leather available, and the Chrysler protection plan. Laser XE, the competition is good. We had to be better. Your Atlanta area Chrysler Plymouth dealer is making great deals. See yours today. Robinson Humphrey American Express didn't become a leading stock brokerage firm without doing its homework. I think we, can look we train all our new brokers and constantly update even our most senior people through an ongoing program of advanced courses. We know that trends can change rapidly in finance, insurance, and taxes, even investment planning. And when those changes occur, we want our people to be right on top of them. For answers to questions about making money, call Robinson Humphrey American Express. Still in his 21st season in Athens. His Bulldogs first down 10 from the 16-yard line. 10.43 to go, quarter number one, scoreless game. Home fake, Duke throwing on the run. It is complete to the fullback, McCluskey, who gets out of bounds at the 21-yard line, a gain of about four on the play. Let's take a look at number 43, David McCluskey. Little play action to the weak side, fakes the draw. McCluskey working himself open in the flat. The ball thrown low into the outside. He has to go down to the ground to catch it. McCluskey had only one catch before that. He's in for Andre Pulpwood-Smith, who is hurt somewhat. Calf and Achilles problems, but will be playing a little today. He'll be spotted a lot, and there is number 35. Andre Smith with the handoff, short of the first down. 
Upwood Smith, the blue-collar fullback for Georgia, as he likes to call himself, is the team's leading rusher with 400 yards, but has a sore calf and Achilles today. I think he makes too many long runs to be called blue-collar, Bob. The one thing in his, his, his advantage is that he's not very big, and he has a tendency to get lost in those linemen, and when he does find that seam, he's just exploded. Four yards over, four runs over 40 yards. Third down two Bulldogs from the 25 of Georgia. 9.35 to go first quarter. Here is Tony Mangrum. He gets the first down out to the 30-yard line. So the first time the Bulldogs were hurt by a backfield in motion penalty on their first possession. Failed to get the first down. And now Georgia gets their first first down of the game against Jerry Claiborne's Kentucky Wildcat. Last year, Jerry Claiborne was co-coach of the year in the SEC. And they have never won an SEC game at home since he's been here. Uh, obviously, in 82, they didn't win any games last year. They had two games here in Lexington. They're looking for a big win over a good football team. On the first and 10, number 89, Anthony Quincy playing for the Oh, my, what a hit. Number two is Brian Williams, the defensive end in this Kentucky wide tackle six defense. Hello. See Brian Williams come in the top of your screen, and this is one that you pay, pray for. It's a blitz. Nobody picked him up, and he just hammered poor Tony Mangrum before he had the football. Huh. Well, that'll make it second down 12. That's a, one of the tougher ways to lose a couple of yards. Whoa. Contact sport. Second down 12, Georgia. David Dukes two receivers to the left and it's going to look that way. He hits Andre Smith. Nice move by Popewood Smith. There he goes again. To the 42-yard line of Kentucky and a penalty flag at the spot of the tackle. Brian Williams will have credit for the tackle. A little toss to the left side and Andre Smith, who did not start this game, and we told you about his sore leg, is playing past his hurt today. Andre Smith was a tailback in high school. These are not the moves of a fullback. Don't confuse him with a fullback. Look at that move. It voids Kramer to the inside, then Jacobs misses. He leaves three Kentucky players in the dirt. That's Gordon Jackson saves the touchdown there. There's going to be a mark off against the University of Georgia. This will come back quite a ways. Back inside Georgia territory to the 43-yard line. Here's Mac Gentry, the official, with the announcement of the penalty. Clipping! Offense! Well, that's too bad for Andre Smith because Andre Smith made a great individual effort on gaining that yardage, but the Bulldogs move it back. They maintain their first down, but they move the ball back to the 43-yard line. Off the Georgia Bulldogs. Scoreless game, first quarter from Lexington. 8-19 remaining. Bulldogs with that high back formation you see so often with Georgia, and they split two receivers, Quincy and Lane, out to the right side. Quincy has been hurt, just not healed enough to get back in action. They handed off to the left side, gained about three yards. Tom Wilkins with the stop. Tony Mangrove. That's the second time they've directed a first down play, Bob. They put the formation to the wide side of the field, directed the action back into the sideline. Now we have David McCluskey, 43, back in for Georgia, along with Tony Mangrum. Cleveland Gary, the Georgia freshman tailback who is running so well, is still injured, will not play today. And off to McCluskey. He drives it up the unit, close to the first down, inside Wildcat territory to about the 48 of Kentucky. There's David McCluskey, a sophomore from Rome. He was a fullback, then a tailback, then a fullback, and was frankly a little bit disgruntled at the beginning of the year about his position on the team. And Vince Dooley, as he said so many times, David, keep your head up. Your chance will arrive. It has arrived here today, as he's going to probably see more playing time than Andre Smith. Third down one, Georgia. Double tight ends, Williams and O'Leary. Scott Williams to about the 38-yard line of Kentucky first down Bulldogs. Maurice Douglas, number 27, quarterback, making the tackle for Kentucky. 
Cam Williams, excuse me, had a great game against Vanderbilt last week. Excellent game, and he seems to be getting better and better as he's a converted fullback. They've got him playing tight end, a real hustler and the team leader type of person. But you can tell he's getting more more familiar with reading the various coverages and finding the open area. He loves to block too. We'll be showing you some of the great blocks he makes over on the left side a little bit later today. Oh, just barely tripped up comes Andre Smith. He gets it to about the 32-yard line. Thought he was about to pop it on the right side. He shot through that hole against Vanderbilt last week for a long run. He's had several of them, as we told you, and is Georgia's leading ground gainer with 400 yards coming into the game. And so far today, Smith has uh, the pass reception of 30 yards and 16 yards running the ball. 46 yards in offense for Andre Smith already today. Second down four from the 32 of Kentucky. Pocket A, 85 in motion. Smith again gets the first down. Breaks tackles to the 21-yard line. All Calhoun, Russell Hairston making the tackle. You're going to watch Pulpwood here. Watch his feet. Now, this is something that he does exceptionally well. He can make you look bad on defense simply because you think you got him here, but he's not through yet. You know, a mentally tough running back. Not got great size, but he delivers a bigger punch than he is inside. Mangrum. Mangrum to about the 19. And really, you can you can say the same thing about Tony Mangrum, Tim. Tony is also a 5'11", 195-pound fullback, tailback switch, as you look at Jerry Claiborne. But Mangrum also delivers a pretty good punch in the inside. Yes, he does. The Georgia offensive line, you know, under the tutelage of Joe Tereshinsky and Eddie Williamson, again, performing exceptionally against this Kentucky defense right now. They're moving them off the ball. On second down eight from the 20 of Kentucky, Tron Jackson, number 25 in for Georgia, along with Andre Smith. That's Smith, 35. Dives inside the 15 to the 14. Steve Mazza with the tackle for Kentucky. Kentucky, remember, is number three in the SEC against the rush. Andre Smith going to have to go off to the sideline to change his shoe. If you saw it came off during that run. So McCluskey and Mangrum come in, and Tron Jackson goes out. Talk to people about running against this 4-4 look, wide tackle, 6, split 6, whatever you want to call it. Most folks will tell you the best way to attack it is run right at it. And that's what George is doing right now. Double tight ends for the Bulldogs. It is third down two from the 14 of Kentucky. Scoreless game, first quarter. Mangrum. Oh. Throwing his body into the middle of the Kentucky defense. Thompson and Hairston making the tackle for the Wildcats. Close to a first down. I believe they may be short as we look at it again. See Jim Holton blocking down. Watch Russell Harrison fill this hole. Pow. Harrison is 6'4", 200 pounds for Kentucky, capable of playing a linebacker spot, so he can make the hit as Tony Mangrum, who's been hit hard two or three times here early in this ballgame today. Of course, anybody who plays Kentucky knows you're going to get hit hard. Here we go. Fourth down and one, and the Bulldogs are going for it. They are five out of six on fourth down conversions this year. McCluskey and Smith in the backfield from the 12 of Kentucky. Mangrum whistles, whistles sounded, however, possibly before the play ever started. The 25-second clock is at zero. It may have elapsed. And if that's the case... not a delay it is illegal procedure you see the clock down to zero but they're just saying georgia had illegal procedure perhaps somebody in motion perhaps not enough men on the line of scrimmage something of that nature at any rate it is a five-yard penalty and now kevin butler who is injured he has a deep bruise on the outside of his right kicking leg was not expected to play but surprisingly did warm up and is in to kick today he will spot this ball right about the 24. It will be a 34-yard field goal attempt for Kevin Butler, who is 13 out of 16 on the year. And last week, in the final three points of the Vanderbilt game, set the new Southeastern Conference all-time scoring record with 317 points. Let's see how he kicks with an injured kicking leg. Kevin Butler pops that one almost out of the stadium. Georgia takes a 3 to nothing lead with 3.29 to go in quarter number one from Commonwealth Stadium on the campus of the University of Kentucky in Lexington.
put in a long, hard, tough day. So you deserve to end the day in style. The 1985 Toyota SR5 Sport Truck, sporting a new electronically fuel-injected engine that makes it the most powerful truck in its class without sacrificing an ounce of style or comfort. The Toyota Sport Truck. Isn't it a good-looking brute? was 65 yards well executed by Georgia 14 plays consumed seven and minutes and 14 seconds Butler got a 34 yard field goal what was the key to that drive Tim it ran the fullback in that drive six times all the time Bob back away from the formation I think that they're looking for Kentucky to be concerned about the option in the wide side of the field and I think they're trying to take advantage of that bubble back to the weak side here is Gillespie the senior from Sprayberry High School in Marietta Georgia with the kickoff in place of Kevin Butler and Gillespie with an outstanding job of hitting the ball down into the end zone, then out of bounds on the far side. And I think he'll be proud of himself. He had only kicked one time prior to this, and that was once during Vanderbilt last time. Other than that, Gillespie has backed up Kevin Butler his entire collegiate career at the University of Georgia. But his kickoffs will play an important role here today. Butler will not be kicking off. For Kentucky, first down 10 from the 20. Trailing Georgia 3-0. 329 to go, quarter number one. That multiple offense lining up into the eye with a slot right for the Wildcats. George Adams to the 22 and no more. Knox Culpepper, number 48, with the stop for Georgia. Talking with Bill Lewis, the defensive coordinator for Georgia last night, said when, when uh, Adams was at the tailback position, they were less concerned about the toss, about the sweep, and they were going to slide their defense in a half a man to try to compress the open spaces in that defense so that he couldn't find that open space inside. Cisco Bryant, number 19, in at the wide receiver position in motion. He's a burner. He can go deep on you. Ransel, scrambling, throwing. Incomplete, intended for Cisco Bryant on the far sideline. John Little covering on the play for Georgia. Ransel had some problems last week and a few the week before. He had been playing very well for Kentucky, but last week, late in the ball game, when Kentucky was losing to LSU, backup freshman Kevin Dooley came in and finished the game for Bill Ransel. Ransdell has been taking a beating the last two weeks against Mississippi. A big gash on his uh, on his lift that was sewn up on the sidelines. He went back in and played a little cartilage rib problem that has affected his motion. But he's healthy now. Son of a former Kentucky offensive lineman. Well, he's from Elizabethtown, Kentucky. It's third down eight from the 22. It's complete. And that is the 33. George Adams, the team's leading receiver, short of the first down. Kentucky will have to get rid of the ball. In comes Paul Calhoun and the punt team. People might ask themselves, why would they throw a pass like that, a, a three or four yard pass when they have to go eight? Well, you figure when George Adams gets his hands on the ball, he's got as good a chance as anybody at breaking the tackle and getting the first down because the linebackers have dropped deep. Eight bowl scouts here looking at this football game this afternoon. Both of these teams will probably be in a bowl. There's Calhoun third in the nation in punting, and you can see why. Jimmy Harrell from his own 13 for Georgia. Wham, bam, go At the 18-yard line, Cam Jacobs, linebacker with the special team play. Minute 58 to go, quarter number one. Georgia leads three to nothing. This is Turner, Network Television. For many years, for their EPA 50,000 mile test, all four U.S. automakers have been buying just one brand of gasoline. That gasoline is Chevron. Of all gasolines available, Chevron was the one each of them chose to buy. Nobody told them which gasoline to use, nor did Chevron offer them any inducement other than the quality of its gasoline. Yet all four U.S. automakers independently chose Chevron with its patented deposit control additive. Shouldn't Chevron be the gasoline you choose? Chevron says yes. 
If you can't decide between our shrimp and fish, have them both. Make the long time silver great. Seafood escape. Try our shrimp and fish special. Three of our new larger shrimp and a crispy fish fillet served with golden fries, freshly made coleslaw, and two crunchy hush puppies. With our shrimp and fish special, the choice is easy. And so is the price. Make the long time silver great. Seafood escape. Beautiful afternoon in Lexington. Temperature in the low 70s. Expected to be up in the high 70s today, but it's starting to cloud up just a little bit, so the temperature will probably remain very mild here. No chance of rain, according to the forecasters, at least until this evening. First and 10, Georgia from the 18. Here's Tony Mangum drives on the 20 to the 22-yard line. And now we're going back to our studios in Atlanta for this update on college football. We take a look at Doug Flutie, Boston College in Rutgers. Beautiful pitch right over the middle. Troy Stratford just walks in. First quarter score, Boston College 7, Rutgers nothing. Back to Bobby Jim. Football team, as uh, the Kentucky coaches will tell you. They got beat up pretty badly playing Rutgers this year. Very physical team. Second down, six from the 23 for Georgia. Shoots under pressure. Look at him break the tackle. Throws the ball away. Excellent move by David Dukes back there to avoid a loss of nearly 10 yards. Very good pressure by 47, Stacy Burrell, on number 10, Georgia quarterback David Dukes. Ken Kentucky decides to blitz on the second down play. Burrell beats a block. Dukes scoots away from him, and downfield, Maurice Douglas and Herman Archie are going at it. Douglas did a nice job of covering Herman Archie as Claiborne catches the ball out of bounds. Great hands. Great hands. Jerry Claiborne. One of the finer catches of the day. Mangrum about three yards up to the 27-yard line. On the third down and six. And Georgia, thanks to excellent quarterback pressure from Kentucky, will have to get rid of the ball. And in comes Chip Andrews. Kentucky player is down. That's number 54, Jerry Reese, the freshman defensive right tackle who's been playing so well. He came in to replace the injured Jeff Smith. Kentucky gets very thin in that rank, and so let's hope for Kentucky's sake that Jerry Reese, who made the tackle on the play, it will be okay. Now let me tell you what thin is, Bob. Backing up Jerry Reese are two people that just received scholarships this week. You know, they've got no real experience. Johnny Shannon and Mike Villada. So they need Jer Jerry Reese to stay healthy. He's a high school All-American from Hopkinsville, Kentucky. Highly recruited, particularly by Arkansas, and uh, chose to stay here in Kentucky. Has very strong feelings about the Big Blue. That's one thing Jerry Claiborne has been able to establish, a, a kind of a reestablish pride in Kentucky football. It is fourth down two from the 27, Chip Andrews. Gets away a very quick kick. Not much hang time. Eric Pitts has some opportunity and a couple of blocks. Out to the 45, and Kentucky gets some good field position. 36 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Georgia leads 3-0, real old-fashioned. Southeastern Conference rock'em sock'em going on here in Lexington. This is Turner Network Television. Today's Army, when artillery goes to the field, so does high technology. Be all that you can be. Keep on reaching, keep on growing. Computers, laser-guided missiles, and teamwork honed to a split-second response. Only the Army gives you this kind of training with just a two-year enlistment. a loner looking out for number one making money out of war it's almost an act of nature selling his wares to the highest bidder i warn you i'm a mexican national doing business with the yanks but this time he's gone too far if i ready to leave not under your terms william olden is alvarez kelly tonight at 8.05 p.m eastern on superstation wtbs George Adams carried once, got a screen to the left side, and Kentucky got a first down, and here is the first down play. Ransdell to George Adams, number 33, the final play of the first quarter. 
They lined up Chris Derry at halfback. Derry went downfield, picked off the linebacker, and enabled George Adams to get some running room. Well, that gives us an opportunity to take another commercial timeout at the end of the first quarter. We'll be right back. Georgia 3, Kentucky nothing. This is Turner Network Television. Dick, send this by Emory to Pittsburgh. And if it's not there by 10.30 tomorrow, I'm holding you personally responsible. Send this by Airborne to San Diego. And if it's not there by 10.30 a.m., Dick, you're in big trouble. Send this by Pure Later to Seattle. And better get there by 10.30, Dick. If you were in Dick's shoes, you'd probably do what Dick's going to do. Hello, Federal. Federal Express. Why fool around with anyone else? Some people would rather put up with dandruff than use a dander shampoo. I guess they think they're too harsh. A shampoo should care for hair. Mine does. It's special self-balancing formula. Sends dandruff protection only where I need it. On my scalp, not on my hair. And it gently conditions where it's needed. Leaves my hair soft, healthy looking. My shampoo? Yeah, it's a dander shampoo. But it's today's head and shoulders, and it cares for my hair. Portions of today's game are brought to you by your Toyota dealer in the all-new Corolla GTS with its scorching, sweet, 16-valve engine. Oh, ready to begin the second quarter here. They're going to have to reset the clock. Had a little problem. Had only 13 minutes. Wildcats tear the Bulldogs to shreds. We appreciate the banner. Bulldog fans would probably have some argument with that, but I'll tell you one thing. The Wildcats, it's kind of a cat and dog fight would be a good way to describe this game here today. Do we get to rate it? That's a good way to describe it. If that's so corny, I don't think I will describe okay, it good. that way. You know, last year, the score was kind of deceptive. It turned out to be a lopsided score, but did you see Pitt and uh, Navy taking a, lead, taking a lead over Navy? Last year, Kentucky was leading at halftime against this Georgia football team. Mark Higgs in the backfield. He's the freshman runner for Kentucky who's been scorching the turf. He's number 22. Very quick, not much going that time. Stopped at the line of scrimmage by 44 Boswell and 59 Greg Waters for Georgia. Higgs is a freshman from Owensboro, Kentucky, who is averaging eight and a half yards per carry. Just a little guy, 5'7", but very compact and very, very fast. Higgs out now and Adams back in. As you can see, historically, the Wildcats have had a difficult time rushing against the Bulldogs. Second down 10 from the 44. Randall out of the split back formation. It's complete to number four, Cornell Burbage, to the 27-yard line, 28-yard line of Georgia. Tony Flack with the catch. And that time, we saw the arm of Bill Ransdell that we saw starting to develop in the Hall of Fame Bowl last year. Eighth catch of the year for Burbage. He worked his way clean of Johnny Little underneath. Safety coming in to make the hit. Look how Ransdell just stands there, very composed, sure of what he wants to do as Flack comes in and puts him on the ground. And Burbage, a very enthusiastic receiver, very physical young man. This is the deepest penetration of the game for the Kentucky Wildcats. They trail three to nothing, opening moments of quarter number two from Lexington. Ransdell to George Adams. Stops at the 26, gain of one or two, no more on the play. Adams is... Uh, really runs between the tackles. Not much of an outside sweep type players, but he likes to string it out a little and then cut against the grain occasionally. And you're seeing a different, a little bit different formation with Derry playing halfback, Adams playing fullback. Now, if I'm on Georgia, what I'm thinking there is is run to the side of Derry, and I don't have to worry much about a counter trap coming back the other way. Second down eight from the 26-yard line. Split backs. They don't usually throw to Derry, but they'll be looking for him occasionally. That time looking over for George Adams, but all that uh, quarterback Bill Ransdell could see was Kenny Sims and Donald Chumley. They were right in on top of him, 76 and 57. Here's Derry kind of trying to get into a pass pattern, possibly. Well, just a little fake here, and then Adams running out in the flat. They tried to deliver the ball to him, and... You can look for Chris Derry to be pretty much ignored on pass patterns, and I wouldn't be surprised if Bill Ransdell found him later on in the game a couple of times. Now Lucas and Wheeler double tight end for Kentucky. Single setback Adams on a third and eight at the Georgia 26. Four-man rush by the Bulldogs. It's picked off by Georgia's Jeff Sanchez. Back to the 29-yard line goes 
Sanchez, his fourth interception of the year, the senior from Yorba Linda, California. Ransdell's fifth interception of the year, make it number six on the year. Ramsdell goes to the right place. You have to attack this down the middle, but the ball's got to get up a little bit earlier, and you can't hang it quite that high. He draw, draws it a little bit too far back to the weak side. Sanchez comes all the way from the other safety to make the play. And that young Jeff Sanchez is a very heady football player. He knows the weaknesses of the pass defense and puts himself in a situation to make the play. Brought the ball back 24 yards on the return also. Uh, we might add that Kentucky had only nine turnovers in their first five games, then had nine turnovers last week against LSU. So that turnover bug has started to bite the Wildcats. I'm sure they'll see if they can put a stop to it. Dukes to Freddie Lane. Lane to about the 33 or 34 yard line where he's hauled down. Bulldogs lead 3-0. Wildcats drive was stopped on the Jeff Sanchez interception. That ties Sanchez for the SEC lead in interceptions also. Pulls him away from Tony Flack and uh, I think uh, John Little also has three. Ties him with Paul Calhoun of the Kentucky Wildcats. It'll be second down six Georgia from the 33 yard line. 12-27 to go first half of play. Lovely all afternoon. Warmer than expected here in Lexington, about 73, 74 degrees. And off to the fullback. Out to the 38-yard line goes David McCluskey, tackled by 48, Cam Jacobs. That Georgia offensive line in the middle is going to be an interesting story as it develops. You see 61, Keith Johnson is in there now. The big 270-pound senior who's had an injured back most of the year. Peter Anderson, who had been playing at center in place of Johnson, has a sore thumb. Kim Stevens is the freshman left guard. So you're going to see Stevens, Anderson, and Johnson all at center some, and you're going to also see Anderson and Stevens also at guard some for Georgia. The guy with the center, the, the center has the ball, right? Is that, that's the guy who snapped the ball. That's what they're telling him in the huddle. Here's Mangrum. Oh, hit hard. May have gotten the first down, though. Cam Jacobs with a tackle. We'll just see where they spot the ball. This may be one of those occasions where the sticks will have to come in. And Cam Jacobs, you might call him a loose goose, Tim Foley. He's an intense individual. There's no question about it. He's always tapping his foot or moving around a little bit when you're talking to him. And he has really been impressive in his ability to make the change from a down defensive lineman to the guy that is the middle linebacker, really, for this Kentucky defense. Talk to a Miami Dolphins scout, Chuck Connors, who's a friend of yours today. He says that uh, he thinks Jacobs is a pro prospect, if you see the measurement. Well, they brought his brother, into, uh, who also played here at Kentucky, into the Dolphin training camp, and he was there for a while. Jacobs is from Coral Gables High School, played for Gary Gormley down there. Well, right the now. Bulldogs didn't get the first down. They're going to have to punt the ball away. Just by an inch or so. And, you know, when you look back on a football game, it's plays and ball spotting and good tackling and so on, and things of that nature that will hold a team from the first down at this point of the game that can really turn a game around. There's 83 Pitts, the punt returner. Pitts averages about seven yards of punt return. Chip Andrews had a 53-yarder and a 39-yarder, averaging 46 on the day, just about a yard beyond his number three ranking in the SEC as a punter. This is a beauty. Got to get a lot of distance out of this one. Drives Pitts back to the six-yard line. An excellent coverage by Georgia. Number 22, Tony Mangrum on special teams with the stop way back at the Kentucky six-yard line. Once again, Bulldog punting has really helped him out. That was a 55-yarder and great coverage. We'll be right back. 450 degrees. That's how hot parts of your car's engine can get, even in ordinary driving. Watch how heat and stress can break apart your oil's protective molecules. That's motor oil breakdown. STP oil treatments heat activated molecules fight motor oil breakdown, fortifying your oil with extra lubricants and anti-wear agents. Get extra protection. Fight motor oil breakdown with STP oil treatment. STP. Your car care company. Tonight is unmistakably. Tonight is unmistakably. Tonight is unmistakably. Tonight is unmistakably. Well, we thought we'd take you to our place for dinner. Tonight is unmistakably. Tonight is unmistakably. Here's to your place. Tonight is unmistakably. Thick and Here's to our place. This deep 
territory possession. Kentucky will probably be giving the ball to number 33, Adams, who, by the way, has a very special relationship with his offensive line. Before every game, my offensive line comes to me and tell me that I'm, they're going to block as hard as they can for me so I can get 100 yards. And I told them if I get a 1,000 yard season this year, I'm going to take them all out for steak dinner. Well, he's on his way, 670 yards so far. As a matter of fact, he's on the pace to break the Sonny Collins Kentucky rushing record. Have to buy a lot of steak for that uh, offensive line. Lanzo completes the pass under pressure to the 12-yard line. And it was the fullback, Chris Derry, who made the reception. We're going back to our studios in Atlanta for this college football update. Thank you, Bob. Oklahoma State trying to keep its Big 8 title hopes alive. Quarterback Rusty Hilger to Charles Crawford. Easy touchdown. Oklahoma State on top of Colorado. 7-0. Back to Bob and Tim. Tim, that sure surprised me to see Ransville throwing down there at his six. Well, I think they're going to have to do a little bit of that. I don't think they're going to overpower this Georgia defense for sure. And, uh, unfortunately, we went away there. The tackle was made, uh, or the pressure was applied by Wycliffe Lovelace. And I've been waiting for three weeks to say his name. <laughs> I love that. He's from Clewiston, Florida. And Georgia has called timeout. Boswell onto the sideline. Saw him drop his helmet there. He's getting a new one, making an equipment change. And John Brantley, a freshman from Wildwood, Florida, comes in. And there is Bill Ransdell. We say they say he has a heart of a lion, a very good leader, but he's struggling a little bit in the season right now. Father and offensive back for Kentucky several years ago from Elizabethtown. Thrown an interception earlier today. Down there talking to Greg Nord, the offensive backfield coach. Jerry Eisen, the offensive coordinator, really loves that Ransdell. And he just is really proud of the way he's dealt with the pressure that he's experienced the last couple of weeks, feels that he's ready to play. And that man is not only the quarterback, but he is an emotional leader on this football team because he is, he will stand in there and take the punishment and, and come back and play with pain. And remember, he's a sophomore. This is not a senior quarterback here. It's a sophomore. You'll be hearing a lot about him as time goes by here with this Kentucky football program. And don't erase the name of Kevin Dooley, number 18 for Kentucky, who's the backup quarterback who performed so well last week. Uh, no relation, by the way, to the man named Vince, but some of his teammates call him Vince. <laughs> Surely they just. Second down three for Kentucky from their own 13. Here's George Adams. George Adams gets to about the 14, needs to go to the 16-yard line, a little beyond for the first down. Brings up a third down turnover situation, and the Bulldog fans are here in Lexington today. The motorhome started coming in a couple of days ago. I remember seeing that head a couple of weeks ago. Now, <laughs> it happens. That head is everywhere the Bulldogs play. By the way, today's the final day of the racing season at Keeneland. They have some television sets on at Keeneland. Tim Foley, I'd let you describe that play. It was Mark okay. Logan with the ball, and uh, you just explained that one to me. I hope we have this on tape. We do. Way to go, fellas. That's it. This is kind of the old bummerooski. They Ranzel hands the ball back to the center. The center then is supposed to put the ball on the ground, and somebody's come around and pick it up. It was just a fake type of thing, trying to catch uh, Georgia by surprise. It didn't work out well. That was Petroviak to Ransdell to Petroviak to Logan to Calhoun to punt. And Calhoun hits the worst punt of the year for him. It's taken by Flack at the 41. So the attempted chicanery by Kentucky fails. A poor punt by Calhoun, and the Bulldogs have good field position. 9.19 to go. Quarter number two, Georgia three, Kentucky nothing. This is Turner, Network Television. Jerry, you bounced the $42 check. I've got six grand sitting in savings. We're sorry, the bank is closed. Please call tomorrow between them. Isn't it time you took back control? The Citibank financial account includes no bounce checking, 24-hour access, and one consolidated statement. So once again, you're in control. So you'll transfer 800 to my check. Great. Have a nice day. Uh, good night. The Citibank financial account. The most bank for your money. <laughs> hey, let me bum a chew of your beef snack. Now, you gonna like that balanced taste. Balanced? Uh -huh. What? Some chewing tobacco's lean to the sweet side, while others lean to the hard side. Even bite. 
My beach nuts got balance taste. Just right. Give me some of that balance taste. I'm tired of traveling. Balance taste. That's beech nut red and refreshing wintergreen. Tim, I thought they were going to snap the ball to 44 Deary on this play. Well, this is a uh, kind of a offshoot from a play they call it a bummerooski. Watch Ransdell sticks it up under Logan. He just he sits there and lets everybody run out and then tries to go the other way. Not a bad call, Bob. You're in a situation you don't want to risk throwing the ball backed up in your own territory, so you come out with a trick play like that. If it works fine, if it doesn't, kick it. But they would like to have kicked it better. Right. The Calhoun punt didn't go very far. Only 30 yards. Now Georgia has it. First down 10 at the 41 of Kentucky. Not much on the handoff. That's Jerry Reese with his arms all over Andre Smith. So Jerry Reese, who went out shaken up earlier, seems to be better now. We're going to pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. Let me just say, Bob, they call it the Bummerooski because. Bum Phillips de developed it, and that's why they uh, turned it back. Here's the handoff to the tailback, Lars Tate, and Tate drives near the first down, down just outside the 30-yard line, Reese with the tackle once again. So Lars Tate, the freshman from Indianapolis, Indiana, gets some good offensive line play here. Look at Pete Anderson playing left guard, just... Blowing the Kentucky player out of there, creating the room for Lars Tate. Lars had a great run last week against Vanderbilt. They're hoping that they're hoping that that can give him the confidence to go on to kind of strive to reach the potential that they have in mind for this young man. Third down, less than a yard from the 32. Here's oh. Tate. I don't think he got the first down. Cam Jacobs once again making the key play on a third down short. He did it just the last series against Georgia. What a game this youngster's having from his left linebacker position. And a round of applause from the partisan Wildcat supporters. Fourth down one, David Dukes has called timeout. Now this could change Vince Dooley's thinking here uh, with an injured Kevin Butler on the sideline. He can kick, but Vince Dooley will now have to make a decision on whether he wants to go for it on fourth down. We'll be right back. Have you tasted what's making America say? It's here! All here at Hardee's. Have you tasted how a biscuit's done the Hardee's way? It's, it's here. here! All here at Hardee's. Introducing Cinnamon and Raisin Biscuit, our original homemade rise and shine recipe. Now with cinnamon and plump juicy raisin, then iced with a smooth glaze. Sweeten up your day with new Cinnamon and Raisin Biscuit. It's here, it's all here at Hardee's. Some make greatness look simple, like the great Gretzky and Canon's new vision of photography, the inspiring T70, with the pure agility, the complete versatility of touch-button control and three distinct program modes. Now, Canon makes it simple to handle any shot. The inspiring new Canon T70. It makes the great shot simple. 